Hi everybody, it's time for Matter and Energy and Chemical Reactions. All right, so in our last unit, we talked about the law of conservation of mass and matter. We learned how mass and matter cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can change forms. When we balanced equations using the Legos, we saw that however many Legos we had on the reactant side also equaled out what we had on the product side. The same amount of matter still existed. Well, guess what? Energy, just as much as mass and matter, cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can change forms. So let's talk about some of those different forms that it can change into. There are two types of energy, kinetic and potential. Kinetic energy is energy that's in motion. There are several forms of kinetic energy. The first kind is radiant, rays from the sun, light that travels in waves, visible light, radio waves. So any type of energy that travels in a wave is kinetic energy because it's in motion. So is thermal energy. We think about thermal, heat. Well, in order to have heat, you have friction. You have molecules rubbing up against each other causing that friction heat. There's mechanical energy, a moving of an object. Whether you're moving your arm up and down or you have a ball being thrown. So an actual object in motion is called mechanical energy. Sound energy. Whenever you hear sound, it's because the air molecules are vibrating through the air and you can hear your sounds because your eardrum vibrates with the vibrating these molecules through the air. That's why you hear my voice right now. Sound energy is energy in waves which cause materials to vibrate. The energy is in motion. And last but not least, we have electrical energy. Electrical energy is when you have charged particles flowing through a wire. Those particles are in motion and that's why it's kinetic energy. The other type of energy is potential energy. Its definition means it's stored. It has potential to move, but it's not moving just yet. There are several forms of potential energy. The first kind that you see in the picture is gravitational energy. That's the potential of objects to move due to the force of gravity pulling them down. So if that rock were to be pushed just a little bit, it would have a lot of gravitational energy because it's so heavy it would pull down due to the force of gravity. The other kind is chemical energy. So this is one we're gonna focus on because we've been talking about chemistry. Whenever energy is stored in matter itself. For example, when you eat food, your body converts the potential to kinetic energy. As you digest food and you take the energy out of the food, your body uses it so that you can open your eyes, so your heart can beat, so your arms and legs can move. That's taking chemical energy and converting it into usable kinetic energy. So we're going to look at these conversions a lot. But here's a really good video about a guy who knows a lot about energy. Has anyone ever told you that the light bulbs in your house are powered by energy from the wind or coal? Or maybe that food gives you the energy to exercise? Are these all the same kinds of energy? What do we mean when we say energy? Something has energy when it's either doing stuff or it has the potential to do stuff. Okay, that's pretty vague, so let's look at a few examples. All right, there we go. Let's go. This is me getting strapped into the world's largest swing. It's located in New Zealand, the country where I grew up. I'm hanging upside down at this platform above a big valley. The ropes are connected to a cable in the middle, like this. Now you can guess what happens when they let me go, right? energy to move something that fast. But where is that energy coming from? Well here, at the top, I have what is called gravitational potential energy. I'm located above the earth, which has a strong gravitational pull on me. I have the potential to move. Now as I'm let go, I start moving and that gravitational potential energy changes into what's called kinetic energy. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. The faster I go, the more kinetic energy I have. Now as I swing past the bottom and I start going back up, I slow down and that kinetic energy is changed back into gravitational potential energy. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. If energy can just change back and forth like that, wouldn't I just keep swinging forever? Well, you heard how noisy it was, right? I'm losing some of that energy as sound energy, which is also just the movement of air. So it's another kind of kinetic energy. I'm also making a little bit of heat by friction with the air. And heat is another form of energy. It's by changing one form of energy into another, like this, that we can make useful things happen. Let's go back to the examples from the start. We power our homes with electricity, and let's say that it comes from the wind. When the wind spins a turbine, like this one, it has kinetic energy. A generator inside the turbine changes that kinetic energy into electrical potential energy, and that is transferred down power lines to our homes. But what if that energy came from coal? Well, when you burn coal, there's a chemical reaction between oxygen in the air and the coal that creates carbon dioxide and other chemicals. The creation of these chemicals releases energy as heat, which we use to boil some water, which spins a turbine, like the wind turbine. Because all this energy is coming from a chemical reaction, we say that the coal has chemical potential energy. A really similar thing happens when you eat food. When your body breaks down that food, chemical reactions occur that keep your body warm and allow your muscles to move. You change the chemical potential energy in the food into heat energy and kinetic energy. One important thing to know is that you cannot create energy out of thin air. You also cannot destroy energy. You can only change it from one form into another. All of the energy in the entire universe has been there since the beginning of time. It's just constantly getting changed around. So, let's review. Energy is either doing stuff or having the potential to do stuff. We've discussed gravitational potential energy, like in the swing, electrical potential energy, like in power lines, and chemical potential energy, like in coal or the food that we eat. There are other kinds of potential energy, like elastic and nuclear, but they're quite similar to these ones. We've discussed kinetic energy, which is where things are moving. We've also mentioned heat energy. Now, as it turns out, temperature is just the movement of atoms. As something gets hotter, the atoms inside it start to wiggle around more and more, move faster and faster. So heat energy, like sound energy, can be thought of as another kind of kinetic energy. So hang on, we can actually simplify a bit here. Energy is what something has when it is moving or when it has the potential to move. That is energy. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that the light bulbs in your house are... Sorry. Okay. So anyway, energy is constantly changing between the two different types, as you saw really good examples in the video. Let's look at this car in the picture. What are some of the different energy transformations that are happening? Well, first of all, what is it that has a car go in the first place? What does a car need in order to go? It needs fuel, right? The chemical energy in fuel turns into mechanical energy because the fuel causes the car to go and the wheels to spin. So as you can see in the picture, the wheels are spinning really, really fast. That motion of the spinning is turning to heat as the friction rubs the tires. You see the smoke behind the car? That's the proof of the heat of the friction of the rubber against the road. So we have constantly changes with all the different forms of energy. Now the big one we're going to focus on is chemical reactions. All chemical reactions involve some sort of change in energy. This change can be large or small. It just depends on the reaction. We've seen big reactions and we've seen little reactions. Well, let's look at a set of reactants. The reactants are thought of as a system with everything else considered the surroundings. There are two main types of chemical reactions, exothermic and endothermic. Exothermic reactions is where energy flows from the system into the surroundings, generally given off in the form of heat. So you can feel the heat coming out from the system. That's called exothermic. Think of it as the heat is exiting the system. 
So you can see the heat coming out. It means that the, the inside is hotter than the surroundings and heat is being released. Next, we have an endothermic reaction. Endothermic reactions is where energy flows from the surroundings into the system and you feel the loss of heat from the surroundings. So that is called endothermic. It's the heat is being absorbed by the reaction happening inside. Let's first look at the common reaction of photosynthesis. Let's look at the mass being conserved and the energy being conserved despite the transformations. First, let's see if you can remember how to balance the equation. To have photosynthesis happen, you need water and carbon dioxide. And then the plant uses light energy to change that into oxygen and glucose, C6H12O6. So to balance an equation, let's see. We have 12 atoms of hydrogen over on this side. What do we need over on this side to balance it out? What times two is 12? Hmm. Oh yeah, six. We should multiply by six to get 12 on that side. Do you remember how to finish it out? Go ahead and give it a quick try. Now go ahead and check your answer. Were you able to get it right? I hope so. All right, continuing on with photosynthesis. So plants use the water and the carbon dioxide that we saw in the equation to make glucose, which is a fancy word for their food. It's a type of sugar. Light energy is transformed into chemical energy. The plants need the light from the sun as well as the carbon dioxide in the water. The heat is taken in so that light energy, which is also heat, is taken in so it's considered an endothermic reaction. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy holidays. So here's a video of an exploding Christmas tree because, you know, you need to have your explosion video. Enjoy. Now that's an exothermic reaction. Happy holidays, everyone. See you next year.